the river flows, it flows to the sea. Wherever that river goes, that's where I want to be. Flow, river flow. Let your waters wash down, take me from this road to some other town. Was to be free, and that's the way it turned out to be. Flow, river, flow. Let your waters wash down. Take me from this road to some other town. This is such a wonderful place to come to. Um, it's Dundee's local beach, Brotty Ferry, and um, lots and lots of people just love coming down here for the peace, the tranquility, the beauty. So this is a part of our natural environment that's nobody could deny. It, it's lovely and we want to keep it that way. The, the beach is basically part of the outdoors and if you're an outdoor person, whether it be hills, uh, canoeing on rivers, uh, coming down to the sea, it's just a thing that uh, I've been attracted to right from the early days. I mean, I do remember as a kid uh, in short pants coming down to fish on the, off the Brotty Ferry Pier um, with just a, a hook and a line and a worm. And, um, I, you know, a lot of the kids still do that. And in those days, there was no foreign holidays and you could get you could get the bus on and they'd cycle down to Brotty Beach uh, from I used to live in the Baxter Park area. And so even at that distance, one was attracted. But since living in Brotty Ferry since 88, um, it's just been the natural place. We're five minutes up the hill to walk down and just get a peaceful evening. It's wonderful to escape from the humdrum affairs of the world um, and come into this environment where you, you know you're totally free of all uh, neg negative <laughs> aspects of living. Another good example, Michael, of even how litter dropped in the street. Okay, close to the beach, but it doesn't take much for this to blow out. There's no lid on this. People just drop it in here because they're too lazy to put it anywhere else. And so litter dropped here is going to end up as likely as not on the beach uh, with the wind blowing it here, there and everywhere. And so, you know, litter, litter that's dropped somewhere else can still end up on the beach if it's close enough. This is one of these gritting bins for, for snow and ice. All right. But it's just abused and the, even the lid is missing. So again, the council you know, isn't doing anything to prevent this happening. And, okay, so we've taken it out of there, it means it won't go on the beach. So I'll save yourself a job in the future. Um, we got on to, through Brotty Ferry Community Council over 10 years ago, a part of a, an ant, a, a which was Beach Watch with the Marine Conservation Society, which we didn't even know about until a circular came around the Community Council that they were looking for groups to clean the beaches and take part in this survey. So it seemed natural to, to want to be part of that. Um, it is a national survey, so it's important that beaches around the country are represented. Um, and we've been doing it ever since. Oh, look, there's a glass. Broken, broken glass. Now look, here it is. Now look at that. Somebody, I nearly put my foot down. You see, I went up. Broken glass here, here, and there. Now that, that is just appalling. I mean, you know, I'm going to pick, look, there's a piece down there as well. Pick it up today, but you see, this is the sort of thing, and kids are going to spot, come here, have a great day, and then end up in Nine Wells Hospital because some silly this little shard, this little shard of glass yeah. as well. There's some idiot. Look, this Swear is. Yeah. See, this is what we're up against. They're not taken in. They're not taken into account. The other people that use the beach when they. And here, there's the. Um, this is what I saw at first. There's the top of the bottle. Look. So inevitably, he come down to do to relax, and uh, you end up clearing away other people's rubbish before you can relax. And this is this is just what we're getting used to doing. It's just not on. We've always been lovers of the environment, and of course, going out in the environment, you notice all the mess. So Doug being Doug doesn't like to see mess and it's this all started when we took the kids out walking and he would pick up rubbish 
and uh, it would drive me nuts and whatever he saw he picked it up and eventually he started picking up the cans and they and in Brotty Ferry and that's how it all started cleaning the beaches cleaning the cans picking up the bottles on the beach after barbecues um, and it just went from one thing to another and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. To the uninitiated eye, this looks a really clean beach. It's only when you get close up you see some of this stuff. There's a lot of stuff lying on it, but mainly it's uh, seaweed and stuff like that. The, the small plastic bits of this, like such, such a bit of balloon or just a piece of plastic like tent material, um, that's the dangerous stuff from the point of view of the wildlife. You know, the small bits, especially colourful. And um, that's what ends up in birds' stomachs. Uh, you've got lots of... That, that's a piece of sewage, I mean, that's sewage related. And it's quite difficult to see. So I suppose the good thing is, it's, it's, it's not, in a lot of cases, it's not highly visible litter. Um, is it the, the, small, the small pieces that are the most dangerous, the small bits of plastic? Well, one would think, you know, that the, the, the birds do, and, and fish, when that's floating in the sea, it's with waves. And of course, the birds aren't able to distinguish between a fish a little tiny fish and a coloured piece of plastic. And this is not uncommon plastic bag. Just uh, semi buried in the sun. Well animals and birds can get their heads trapped in them or yeah. strangle themselves. So But there's some there's some number of years, you're talking about hundreds of years till this has actually disappeared. And because um, it's almost indestructible. Uh, and the sunlight action on this actually breaks this up into smaller bits, so it becomes many times more dangerous when it's sort of floating around and getting, uh, getting uh, uh, broken into smaller pieces. And of course, the, the, the lager can's full of sand, so <laughs> quite heavy. It's actually jammed in the rocks. There's another piece here. That's more loose. There's hundreds of bits of, and I think this is the biggest evil, the, the extent to which when you look at the balls, yeah, every one of these, just thousands of bits there, yeah. potentially breaking up every time the waves come over this in the wind. We'll see if we can get this jam bit out. Yeah. So where's it coming from, Doug, the balls? Well, this is insulation from either DIY or house building. We've seen quite a lot of this coming down the dickety, uh, especially when there was a lot of building activity going on. Most of it stopped now, it's finished. Um, but this is again a question of carelessness on building sites. And it's you know probably the worst form of the sort of litter that will damage wildlife. Almost like uh, hailstones small, all compressed together, but it doesn't take much to break this up into all the tiny, tiny parts. And you can see that that's um, so ingestible by small yeah, living creatures. Like yeah, yeah. Who knows what, you know, a fish sees when it swims about in the water and, and, and what attracts it. But, I mean, the evidence is all there from the, the Marine Conservation Society have got a, an archive of all sorts of animals damaged by ingesting stuff like this. And there's no doubt about it, the, the, the issue is getting worse. Plastic in the environment is um, not decreasing, put it that way. Litter's divided into what they call recreational litter, which is litter thrown away by beach visitors, like crisp packets. Um, but the more serious stuff, as we can see here, is some sanitary stuff, which um, doesn't destroy that easily. Often it's plastic related, and all these pieces there are all sanitary products. Where's, where's most of it coming from? Then? Well, um, that's one of the mysteries. Um, People, of course, flush sanitary stuff down the toilet, which they shouldn't do, but they do. But that should be screened out by the, the whole sewage system. 
the, the loophole we know about is when in storm conditions there's far too much water coming down with rain and, and uh, heavy showers that the storm water tanks overflow and that stuff is discharged into the sea and that's the only time when unscreened litter can get into the river. However, it's been quite a long time since the storm water tanks have overflowed but this stuff's still here. So we're looking for possible uh, other sources being coming down the river from Perth possibly coming into the system from what's happening over in Fife, although they've got a good system over there now, which they didn't have before. So we've uh, put the question to uh, SIPA as to why this is still happening, and uh, it's still a bit of a mystery. Look how thick it is. How long will that take to break down, Doug? Well, because there's plastic in it, as well as paper, it doesn't break down that readily. That bit's plastic, it's laminated, and some of the stuff being paper uh, would break down quicker than the plastic, uh, which the plastic is almost indestructible. Well, given that Scottish Water have had the results from last year's Beach Watch, which showed 20% of the, the whole litter picked up during the national survey was sewage-related debris, then They've not done anything about it. They've also had the results mailed round. We've also told uh, the operator, it's now uh, Veolia, is now the operator of the pipeline that treats the sewage, told them about it, but um, don't see any sign of action. And here's more evidence on the 19th of May of, you know, 90% of a lot, there's a, probably 100 items of litter here, um, you know, 90% is sewage. He said, come on, we'll go for a nice walk along the beach. And, and everybody else has been walking as, as couples holding hands. And uh, I've been walking on my own and he's been picking up litter. <laughs> and that's caused many an argument in the past. But I've got used to that, so I don't mind really. And uh, he's doing a good job. But it would be quite nice to hold somebody's hand as you walk along the beach on a beautiful day. I'm often, as I say, I'm often walking on my own. And this is one reason I do painting, because I can sit and paint on my own and he can do the litter pitting, picking. Or I can write a poem and he can go and lit pick litter. As he's doing now, he just hates seeing. He's got a great big tyre. There's a tyre being rolled along now. <laughs> it's never ending. As our children grew up, we'd take them walking and we'd try and teach them the things to do. But more often than not, we'd, we'd come across bundles of litter and it was so natural for Doug to pick it up <laughs> and get rid of it which is really quite annoying when you want to hold someone's hand all the time but uh, this is how it all began and then 20 years ago um, we were in Brotty Ferry with the children one day I seem to remember and Doug noticed all the cans and he was into recycling at that time and of course cans are valuable so he started picking out the cans out of the bins the kids, the teenagers called him a bin raker. <laughs> bin raker. The kids. The yeah. kids shouted, teenagers shouted, bin raker, bin raker, but Doug just ignored them and collected them. And that was the start of Tayside Recyclers, believe it or not, can recycling. And if you can't beat them, the fact is you've got to join them. So, so over 20 years I've been married to Doug, I've decided that he can't, I can't beat him, he will do this forevermore, so I've got to make the most of it. And uh, this is a song I wrote about him. How do you solve a problem like recycling? How do you catch old Doug and pin him down? How do you find, solve a problem like recycling? An old tin can, a piece of paper, something brown. Many a thing you know you like to tell him. Many a thing he ought to understand. But how do you make him stay and listen to what you say? How do you catch old Doug and pin him down? Oh, how do you solve a problem like recycling? How do you catch old Doug and pin him down? <laughs> <laughs> to solve.